already solved. Uh, we have something interesting. I would say we have a global experiment going on, and that's the pandemic, the corona crisis. Uh, because last year, in 2020, the whole world was shut down. Everyone was staying at home, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And for the first time uh, in this uh, century, uh, the global emission was lower than the year before, 8% lower, because of everyone staying at home, factories was shut down, business was shut down, no one was flying, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, in order to solve the climate crisis, we need to reduce the emission on a global level with about 8% each year. So last year, was that a good year for the climate? I think it was a good year for the climate because our political leadership, we now see that the political leadership can change very fast. But the reason why we had reduction in, in, the, in the emissions, uh, that was not the way forward because this is a really difficult path to go. Because it means that if the solution is to stay at home, shut down factories and, and just the way it, don't stop doing things. Uh, in order for us to succeed with 8% reduction this year, we need to do everything we did last year and double that. We need to stay double home. We need to close twice as many factories. We need to shut down things multiplied by two in order to reduce the emission with another 8%. That's not going to happen. And unfortunately, it's not going to happen. The, the carbon emission are actually on the other direction this year. So it's important that we stop to bad things. But in order to solve the climate crisis, we need to start doing the right things. We will not solve the climate crisis by being inactive. We will only solve this crisis if we start acting and doing stuff. Uh, and what we have in front of us is that we need to half the mission every, every decade from now on. Uh, and we need to reduce it every single year. Uh, and in order to do that, the only way to do that on scale is stop thinking on a linear basis. We need to think of climate action that are scalable and could grow exponentially. So that if we have someone that are implementing a climate solution this year, we need that implement, implementation to be doubled next year and doubled the year after that. Uh, exponential change is really, really fast. The climate is changing exponentially. And that's why we also need to change the solution scale the solution exponentially. So we all need to have a very different mindset about scaling things exponentially. And exponential change is very, very hard for humans to understand. So this is something we really need to educate ourselves about. So it's, uh, it's hard to have this mentality of making everything exponential. Uh, that is good. But the good thing is that many companies they are starting to realize this. And the United Nations, they have started something that is called Race to Zero, where over, where companies and organizations around the world could join uh, and participate in this Race to Zero mission. Uh, and the Race to Zero initiative is actually growing exponentially. Last year, it was 2,000 companies. This year, 4,000 companies. Next year, it's going to be four, over 8,000 companies. And suddenly, you will have millions of companies dragged into this. It's great that companies are joining the races here. It's great that they are pledging. But now we make, must make sure that they're also doing the action. And that's what We Don't Have Time is all about. We want to track the companies so that they're also doing the action. And when they do the action, they need to be rewarded.